I'm Andreas Seila, and I'm a chemist at uh, UCL. And for me, I think the most exciting thing that happened in chemistry this year has been the Rosetta space mission. Now, most people won't really imagine that Rosetta is about chemistry, but really, that's the most important part of the whole thing, is that Rosetta is allowing us to actually go back and look at four billion year old chemistry quite apart from the astonishing precision with which they were able to get this probe over the course of 10 years to actually arrive at the comet and then land on it. The really amazing thing is the information that we're getting about the actual chemical makeup of this comet. And what this is going to do is it's going to inform all kinds of our understanding of how the solar system formed and above all about how life actually started. Now the origin of life is fundamentally a chemistry question. So let's just break this down into parts. First of all, what is this comet made of? And of course it's made of ice, but what kind of ice? Is it water ice? Is it CO2 dry ice? Is it liquid nitro is it nitrogen ice, not liquid solid nitrogen ice? You know, what is it? And if we actually look at the water the water is interesting because the water on our planet is one of the great mysteries. Where did it come from? When the earth coalesced as a lump of molten rock, we would have expected all the water to be basically boiled away into space. And yet perhaps that that water was actually delivered by comets. And so what we need to do is to look at the ratio of H2O to its heavy version, D2O, deuterium oxide, and the ratio of those two isotopes is a very interesting question. The Rosetta space probe, and in fact its lander, Philae, is actually packed with chemical technology. They've got gas chromatography, and gas chromatography is basically a technique which allows you to take molecules and pass them down a pipe, a little bit like a racetrack where some molecules go through faster, some go slower, and that allows you to separate them according to their identity. And at the end of that racetrack is a mass spectrometer, which allows you essentially to determine the mass of each one of these. So we want to know how much H2O there is and how much D2O. What are the other components? But of course the striking thing about those photographs that have come back from Philae have been the darkness of the surface. The fact that it's almost jet, it's coal black. And that tells us that there's all kinds of other stuff. You might think it's rubbish, but there are all kinds of organic molecules. And those organic molecules are really the building blocks, the starting points from which perhaps life began. What are they? We can finally see them in situ not blasted off the surface of the comet by the sun, but actually still cold, still waiting for action. Are there sugars? Are there long chain organics? Are there amino acids? And if there are amino acids, then one of the things we want to know is what kind are they? All of the amino acids on Earth are quite interesting. They occur in a form that we call left-handed, the L form. And if you think about the way in which a chemical reaction happens, many molecules are actually flat. And to turn them into their products, we have to carry out a kind of attack process where a, a, a reactant comes in. And it might come in from this side, or it might come in from the other side. Now, the result would be molecules which are essentially identical in the way they're connected but they would be a bit like left hand and right hand. All the molecules, all the amino acids on Earth are actually of one form, that L form. And what we want to see is what's on the comet. Are they the same? That might perhaps hint that comets actually seeded life on Earth. Or, in fact, are they a mixture? And then perhaps there might be some kind of amplification process, a process by which by some kind of chemical evolution, the L form, the left-handed form, was actually selected for. These are questions which are being looked at by chemists, both on a computational, a modeling level, and also in the lab. And what the Philae mission is doing is it's going to give us huge amounts of information to ask what I think is one of the deepest questions in chemistry. Thank you, Philae. Thank you, Rosetta.